Um, Laura is a care manager for Seniors at Home, which is a division of Jewish Family and Children's Services on the peninsula. And um, one of the services that Seniors at Home provides is in-home care, which is what we've asked Laura to talk about today. Um, I hope that she'll share with us some tips uh, about how to interview an agency and explain what healthcare aides can and cannot do in your home. And maybe even talk a little bit about the advantages of hiring a caregiver through an agency versus hiring an individual. Hi, Laura. Hi, thank you so much for having me today. It's a pleasure. Sure. And it's really Thanks nice for to coming. Meet, to meet all of your other wonderful panelists. Um, so yes, my name is Laura Segura. I work for Jewish Family and Children's Services. Um, and in particular, a division of the agency called Seniors at Home. Um, but overall, the agency takes care of people from birth until end of life. And I've been a care manager there for a number of years now. Um, so I'm here today to talk about home care. And yes, um, Denise, I will be talking about all of those things combined. Um, how, and also, how do you know when you or a loved one may need this extra help? And if you've decided that help is needed, how do you go about getting it? Um, but first I wanna differentiate between home care and home health care uh, because they're not the same. Um, and for some people, this can be very confusing. Home health care is doctor prescribed, medically oriented and typically covered by your health insurance. Home health care is ordered upon discharge from either a hospital or a rehabilitation setting. And these providers go into your home to provide uh, a number of different services, uh, mainly though physical or occupational therapy, sometimes both, um, speech therapy, nursing, and an occasional caregiver who might go out once a week to help with bathing. Um, these services are time limited and um, you don't pay for these services because most home, um, most insurances do cover it when they are properly prescribed. Home care, on the other hand, is non-medical. It's private pay, but if you have a long-term care policy, you may be able to use it for this purpose. Home care caregivers focus on a myriad of tasks, which I will touch upon, um, and they may be a great option for you or your loved one. So let's get started talking a bit about when home care might be needed. One scenario might be that your loved one was fully capable and fully independently functioning at home and ended up with a hospitalization and then going home, it's possible that home health care is not needed or prescribed, but that person could use a little extra boost in help around the house, maybe taking you grocery shopping until you feel strong enough to go yourself, um, maybe you know helping with laundry or some, some task like that. The, the goal would be to get that person back up to full functioning as they were prior to the hospitalization. Another, another scenario might be that your loved one with Parkinson's disease, for example, is showing a slow decline in functioning. Let's take mobility, for example. Um, if you've noticed uh, your loved one walking unsteadily inside the house, maybe grabbing onto furniture and walls for support as they navigate the hallways. Maybe they've had some falls or they're having trouble getting up or down the stairs. Um, perhaps there are unexplained dents in a car, um, a recent traffic ticket or two, maybe an accident. And this might be a signal that driving is not safe anymore for your loved one. If you notice that a once tidy house has become a little more cluttered and unkept, maybe personal hygiene, hygiene grooming has altered, um, it might be time to get a little concerned. It's possible that help is needed in the kitchen. Um, you notice that your loved one has 
lost interest in cooking that they once enjoyed, or weight loss can be noticed through baggier clothing. Um, the fridge might be empty or has some moldy food in it. So these kinds of changes are typically gradual. Um, and if you visit your loved one frequently, you may not notice a lot of these things, um, but with some knowledge about what to look for, you can stay on top of these potential issues and intervene accordingly. Is your loved one showing signs of loneliness? Are they less active outside the home if they're not driving anymore? Are they isolated? So we know that loneliness and isolation can lead to depression and other health, serious health issues. If you and your family choose to bring home uh, help into the home, let's get into a little more detail with that. A caregiver at home can fulfill non-medical tasks and activities. Services can range from a few hours a week to 24 seven. And this can be adjusted always as needed. Home care allows your loved one to remain living where they are most comfortable in their own home, where there may be strong attachments, mem wonderful memories, and, and just, you know, being connected to their past in, in their own homes. Non-medical tasks include personal care, such as bathing and dressing, toileting, medication reminders, housekeeping like laundry, linen changes, dusting and vacuuming, buying groceries, meal planning and cooking, assistance and encouragement with eating, transportation, getting to and from medical appointments and running errands, maybe taking someone out on social outings, Ambulation, walking in and outside the home for physical exercise and maintaining strength. Supervision with climbing stairs, getting in and out of bed, chairs, on and off the toilet. Socialization, help participate in activities or attending outings. What about just companionship, conversation, playing games, reading aloud, listening to music, Anything of particular interest to your loved one. Your caregiver gets paid on an hourly basis. It's more affordable if you only need a few hours a week and costs do go up when you need a lot more care than that. And ultimately, it can be more costly than having your loved one live in assisted living, for example. Our costs now at the agency, my agency, Seniors at Home, which are competitive with other agencies, are with a range. Um, typically, most people need more than four hours, but we don't go below four hours for any given shift. If you do want only four hours, uh, the levels range from level one to level three from 46.50 to 50.50 an hour. And when I talk about levels, uh, this is evaluated when we send one of our um, assessment specialists out to see you in your home. And that's free of charge with our agency. And we do a full evaluation. And so we can say, okay, these are the kinds of things that you're you're needing help with. We ask the questions, we get the answers, and we put them in the appropriate level. If you want more than four hours in any given shift, um, again, levels one to three, it starts at 4150 an hour and goes up to 4550 an hour. And rates over time have definitely been increasing um, because, you know, as we raise um, the minimum wage in our areas for caregivers and other people, then um, then our rates have to have to go up too. Unfortunately, I say that um, home care definitely works well for those people whose most important consideration is to remain as independent as possible, and continuing to make as many decisions for themselves as possible. 
At home, a person has full autonomy over his or, own, his or her own schedules and routines. Most seniors who are considering help at home may feel that they are losing control over their own lives, and so they may be resistant to this kind of intervention or change, or any change for that matter. But I like to promote the idea that hiring help when you need it beats suffering the consequences because those can be tremendous. Having said that, not everyone can financially support home care forever. Um, sometimes it's a temporary measure and then other options need to be considered. For the very low income who qualify for Medi-Cal, there is a program called In-Home Support Services. This program provides care in the home for those who need it and qualify for it. So where do you go to hire help? Well, you have some choices and a home care agency is certainly one of those choices such as seniors at home. You may also hire independently of an agency and word of mouth is one way to locate a good caregiver. I've left out another option, at least I'm not going to be talking much about that because I've not had much professional experience with this, although it, it does exist. And that's going through a referral agency of some kind. And in a nutshell, you pay an agency to find a caregiver for you, and then you become the employer. Um, one such entity would be care.com. The main advantage of a home care agency is that the agency will handle all the background checking and screening processes for all of its caregivers. When you choose an independent caregiver though, you and your family may need to handle all of these essential steps in order to ensure that a caregiver is properly trained and licensed by the state. And if a caregiver, an independent caregiver, is not properly insured, for instance, you and your family could end up being liable for any accidents that incur that occur inside your home. Another potential downside to hiring an independent caregiver is that compared to an agency, the family has to has to handle all of the scheduling. So this could make it difficult to find a replacement on short notice if a caregiver gets sick or needs to take some time off. Agencies usually employ many caregivers and that way they would be able to come up with a substitute for you at any given time. There are a number of important questions to ask a home care agency when you are interviewing them. Always ask a provider if they're licensed, bonded, and insured. You should also be able to get a list of references of clients that they've served so that you can better identify an agency that might work well for you. And if this is not something that they're willing to give up, or give out, then that should be a red flag. So is the home care provider licensed? Many states require a home care provider to be licensed in order to provide services. <clears throat> Our agency, Seniors at Home, has a specific license which allows us to provide a particular level of care. Under our license, we employ what the state calls personal care assistants, but we just refer to them as caregivers. These caregivers need to spend about 80% of their time with personal care, such as the bathing and dressing, and 20% with what we call, and the state calls, light housekeeping such as the vacuuming and dusting and linen changing and laundry. They do not scrub bathrooms. They do not scrub or deep clean kitchens um, and refrigerators, which sometimes clients do ask for. Um, but if, if a caregiver is making food in the kitchen, they can clean up what they have messed up. 
Our license allows for skilled nursing and medication management, but a doctor's order is needed to provide these services. So skilled nursing would be periodic wellness checks like taking vitals and medication management like setting up a pill organizer or dispenser, getting medication orders from the doctor, helping to arrange for delivery or pickup of, of those medications. When a potential home care client comes to our agency and wants to know whether they can get a caregiver from us, we, as I said before, would send out an assessment specialist who performs an evaluation to determine the type of care that's needed and whether or not we can provide that care. These evaluations are free of charge. Our, our caregivers are given basic instruction and care plans are developed with the client so that everyone knows exactly what the care, caregiver is supposed to be doing. But other agencies might also employ and offer more skilled training for their caregivers, such as in dementia care or um, assisting with challenging transfers, because that can be you know, somewhat tricky and you want caregivers who are really well equip equipped to handle those kinds of situations. So it's a good idea to ask each, in each agency that you would interview exactly what are their services? What kind of level of care do they offer? Are they bonded? It's not apparently required by law. We are bonded. Um, home care bonds offer financial protection to seniors and their families in case of malicious treatment or damages caused by a provider. What about insurance? Home care providers often have business liability and workers' comp insurance. An agency needs to be properly insured so that you and your family are not liable if a caregiver is injured on your property. It's also important that a provider has business liability insurance to help cover the cost of any injury or property damage. There are other more specific questions you can ask the agency. How long have you been in business? Do your caregivers have any specialized training? How do you recruit them? What services are offered? How often are care plans reevaluated? Do you require a minimum number of hours a week? Do you accept long-term care insurance? We do, by the way. If the regularly scheduled caregiver isn't available, do you have replacement caregivers? How are families allowed to pay for in-home care? So in today's home care world, especially post pandemic, um, there are often shortages of caregivers. Um, this appears to be a, across the board um, in the various regions in the Bay and I'm sure elsewhere. Um, so at times it can be difficult to find a caregiver for a particular client. And if we run into that situation, we help to refer the client out to other agencies and sometimes are able to make those calls first to see whether there is availability. So I will wrap up a little bit by talking about how to talk to your loved one about accepting care. Um, and this might be something you want to do even before, before you go through the motions of trying to find a home care agency, but to try to identify um, ways in which you can bring your loved one on board with this change. So for me, I think normalizing aging and the need for extra help and care is, is important um, because even if someone doesn't have a chronic or acute um, disease process, um, the natural course of aging does lend itself to more frailty. And of course, you, you're just gonna be 
um, concerned about your loved one's safety in the home. Listen closely to their concerns and try to understand the underlying emotions. Oftentimes it's fear and it's fear about those changes. It's fear about what does this mean for me? Is this the end? It's fear about bringing someone, a stranger into the home and how do you allay their, their fears and concerns? Focus on the positive and the benefits of having care in the home, prevention rather than the consequences. And I think it's also sometimes good to turn the tables around and to explain how getting help will help you if you are a primary caregiver for someone else, it will help you feel less worry and stressed so that you can take care of what you need to do in your own life you could sleep at night knowing that your loved one has the care that he or she needs. And I think most people can relate to that. Um, and by you know letting them know that you wanna be there for them as much as you can be and will always be, um, you also wanna be at your best when you are caretaking for your loved one. And that means taking care of yourself and enabling them to hire some extra help. You can also do a trial run. You can say to your loved one, you know what, let's have a bar let's make a bargain here. I'd like to bring in Susie Smith for one month and let's see how it goes, okay? Um, Hiring a professional care manager may take the onus off of you and help everyone adjust to the changes which are coming. Care managers, as Stephanie said before, can help facilitate with difficult family discussions. That's what we're here for. So I know that's a lot and um, I'm happy to take any questions you may have. get my speaker working here um i would you know you mentioned that it's really difficult now post covid especially to keep enough caregivers on staff and i wondered if you have a lot of turnover i i was thinking maybe it was one reason that the rates have been climbing sort of noticeably in the last five years or so was that people are changing jobs maybe even hopping from place to place as the hourly rates go up? I, I'm not sure. Um, you mean for the caregivers themselves or? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that, well, you know what? By history, um, our caregivers, and we employ a lot of them, but mm -hmm. they do not have to only be employed by us. Mm -hmm. Most of them work for several agencies or at oh. least more than one. Some may yeah. not, but mm -hmm. they're free to do so. Mm -hmm. And and that by itself might make getting the caregiver for, let's say you need 20 hours a week, but you have an available caregiver who, who can only work 10 hours a week, but mm -hmm. that client needs 20. So, mm -hmm. so there are a variety of issues that come into play now with regard to caregivers um, mm -hmm. and other agencies are finding similar situations. So it, it's not certainly just just ours. I think it's an industry wide situation right now. Mm. Yeah. And, and as you know, a lot of caregivers live very far away. So um, they're not even though, you know, uh, minimum wage keeps going up and whatnot. It's, it's certainly not enough to be living within the center of the Bay Area. So many of them come from out of this area to work. And also, therefore, they may want to work as live-ins, or they may want to have a 12-hour shift or mm -hmm. a minimum of an eight-hour shift. And it's not every client that comes to us who needs that or wants that and wants to pay mm -hmm. for that. They want fewer hours. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it can be a bit of a problem these days. Yeah. If... um. And this just popped in my mind when you said that somebody works for more than one agency. If you had a caregiver that you really liked and maybe a loved one with dementia, that having that same face in the house 
would be a better thing. Mm -hmm. um, can you hire the same person through two different agencies? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a billing hassle, but. Uh, uh, you know, that's a very, I've never been asked that question before. So I really don't know. Um, but I think that in today's world, we have to be creative. Um, so I, I would imagine that that's possible. I mean, I, I'm working with a family now where they have a private caregiver in the home Monday through Friday, someone that they found through word of mouth. They adore her on the weekends. They use an agency. Yes. So, yeah, so there is that it. kind of combination that can happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone asked, uh, did you say your organization does accept payment from long-term care? Yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, and another person said, uh, where is the initial assessment done and what does it include? The initial assessment is going into a person's home. It's important to see the home environment where the caregiver would be working. Um, the questions are similar to... Um, Oh, I don't know, just, um, it has to do with evaluating the functioning of the individual. And because mm -hmm. it's non-medical, we're looking at those activities of daily living, right? How does a, you know, a person themselves looking for the help may have a clear idea up front about what it is that they need. Oh, mm -hmm. I have difficulty getting dressed. Well, then the assessment person might say, okay, you know, let's look at that a little more in detail. Is it is it putting on socks and shoes and that's it? Or is it everything from A to Z, right? Yeah. Um, do you need supervision in the shower or do you actually need someone to hold your arm while you're in there seated? Hopefully, if not, we would get them a, a, a chair, you know, for the shower. Um, so so it really depends. So it, it is very in-depth. And then a care plan is drawn up that says, okay, this is what for this, these areas of functioning, this is what needs to be done. And this is what the caregiver will do. And when I mentioned earlier about the different levels, you could hire someone who is only a companion and that person would be a level one and doesn't have necessarily the skill set to be a level two or three. So we also try to evaluate the caregivers as they become employed by us and mm. see where they may fit in those abilities to provide care. Um, so the level one person would be the less uh, expensive end of those um, uh, Correct. hourly ranges that yes. you gave us. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, you know, one question that uh, often comes up in our support groups is the family will have uh, in-home care and they will ask the care, the aid to help with meals or help with laundry or, you know, um, some of the household things uh, beyond just hands-on care for the, the elderly person, if it's elderly. Um, and the and the aide will say no, I yeah. don't I don't do that. That's not a not part of my thing. Right. Um, and so is that something that you need to negotiate with the agency when the care plan is drawn up, so that it's very clear when the person comes in the first day that they they're expected to help prepare meals. They're expected exactly. to do things so, like that. Yes. So the care plan is reviewed with the potential caregiver, mm -hmm. so that that person knows. And it's written, these are the tasks that have been approved. And remember when I said earlier also, I know I said a lot, but the 80%, 20%, and 80% of a caregiver's time theoretically and practically is supposed to be geared more towards those activities of daily living and the functioning of the individual um, you know, the bathing and the dressing and the grooming and the even ambulation and other things that go along in those categories. And, you know, a lot of our clients want, and I understand that they want, um, how more someone to, to, you know, scrub the toilet for me, please, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and other tasks, which really 
are not within the realm of what our caregivers do. Um, and if there are disputes and if there are issues, that's why an agency can be a very good choice because, you know, there's someone to turn to. It's mm -hmm. either, it could be the nurse supervisor of the caregivers in the home, and she's the one who goes out periodically to check up on things, mm -hmm. and she'll make random phone calls and say, how's it going? She'll mm -hmm. talk to the caregiver, she'll talk to the client. And then if I'm involved separately as a care manager, my clients can also come to me if they have a complaint or a concern. And, and so we work as a team. Mm -hmm. So if somebody has a dispute like that, where they were really, it will, maybe it wasn't specified in the care plan that the person was supposed to help with meals or laundry or whatever. Um, does the care plan need to be rewritten? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And then so, maybe a different staff member is, needs to be assigned to that household. Um, you know, if things don't work out, and sometimes, of course, that happens with one particular mm -hmm. caregiver, we would help to find another caregiver for that client. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, different it's, skill set maybe yes, exactly. yeah. and and the client you know over time again depending on the situation the needs may change and mm -hmm. therefore the care plan needs to change and yeah, as you yeah, said sure. maybe that person was independent going into the refrigerator or going into the cupboard and and putting things together on the stove and now they they're no longer able to do that so yeah, you need the yeah. caregiver to step in to help with those tasks and so that does need to re be rewritten in a in a care plan. Right, right. Yeah. Um, would you mind repeating what the um, hourly rates were um, sure. for the different levels? Sure, sure, sure. Um, so I'm mentioning the four hour shift, but these days it's almost impossible. We can try, but it's it's really hard to find a caregiver who will only work four hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's not impossible, but it's it's hard. Um, so those prices are for the only four hours, and we don't go below four hours, $46.50 to $50.50. Mm -hmm. So the $46.50 goes with level one, mm -hmm. and then it, it gets gradually increased. Mm -hmm. if, if the shift is over four hours, it starts at $41.50 and goes up to $45.50. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Um, well, that's our four speakers. I don't see any more questions popping up in the uh, chat. So thank you, Laura.